guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm just gonna be doing a bunch of planting. I've been kind of slowly gathering things as the spring has gone on down at the garden center, and I've got quite a pile I want to work through. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just gather up a bunch of plants. I think I'm gonna start with the small stuff first. I've got a bunch of four inch perennials I wanna get in the ground, and then we'll kind of work up from there. I've got some trees and shrubs I wanna work on as well. Um, so I thought that maybe you guys might be interested in seeing some of these plants and then kind of knowing the thought process behind where I'm putting them. So I'm gonna run into the greenhouse and gather up everything that I wanna start with. So I already have a cart kind of started with stuff. I planted a couple of flats of delphiniums last night. In fact, these are the varieties. This really pretty kind of purplish pink one called Astolat. Astolat, not sure how to pronounce that, but it's beautiful. And delphinium bluebird. And then today, I'm going to be planting black knight. They get quite tall, four to five feet tall, uh, 18 inch spacing. And I usually get delphiniums to bloom really well a couple of times during the summer. And I just love them, super hardy down to negative 40. I've also got some of my other essentials here. So I've got my kneeling pad and my gloves, my starter fertilizer, my bottle of water, and then my trowel. So these are some things right here that I'm gonna need to plant. I've got nine lemon balm plants. This is one that I want to plant because it just reminds me of my childhood. I love the smell, just wonderful. Mm. It's planted in my parents' garden, kind of toward the back underneath an apricot tree. And I can just remember smelling it in the warmth, like in the summer mornings. Then I've got a flat of this Iberus, um, Candy Tuft is the common name. And this is Snow Station, is the variety. Look at it right now. Oh, it's so pretty. And then I've got some Coral Charm peonies, which one of these is actually gonna go to my parents' house. We both bought a flat, my mom and I, we got carried away. But I only need five and she said thought she could use seven. So I'm gonna give her one of mine. And then I've got a couple flats of poppies. So you can see the foliage there, isn't that neat? This one is called Princess Victoria Louise. Look at that coral fluffy flower, ugh late spring through summer blooming 24 to 30 inches high hardy to negative 40. i really want to plant these for cut flowers and then we've got royal wedding the white with the black at the base of the petals there this one gets a little taller 30 to 36 inches tall i have some lamium some pink chablis lamium that I wanna get planted. And this stuff wintered over in the greenhouse. Beautiful ground cover. So I think that that'll be a pretty good start. We'll start with some of these smaller things, um, small perennials, and then we'll move on to shrubs and trees. So I have this space up here where you can see the tulips. They haven't started to bloom yet. There are incredible hydrangeas in there. I recently just uh, transplanted this boxwood to this area and then planted some agapanthus. So I'm trying to decide what to put in the rest of this area. I don't think delphiniums would be good because they'll compete with the height of the Incredibles. Plus we get a lot of wind that comes straight through this area and the delphiniums tend to want to topple if um, there's really strong winds. So I'm thinking maybe some of these up here. I think it might be a really nice texture. I was thinking of adding some lemon zest oh so easy roses as well. So I think that would be really pretty to have the pink up here along with the yellow eventually. All right, so this plan is kind of evolving. I knew I wanted some kind of a shrub back in here and it has to be one really that can take quite a bit of sun. It gets shade until about midday, but then when the sun is straight above, it starts getting nailed with just the hot afternoon heat. So I'm going with something with a red leaf because the Incredible that's going to be here will be green. We've got green boxwood, green boxwood, green agapanthus. So I need something that will contrast. I already planted one of these in another area of the garden, but I think that this one will be absolutely perfect here because unlike other smoke bushes, oh, I can't get the tag open, there we go. It only grows four to six feet tall and wide. That is amazing. And they're really, really um, winter hardy. So hardy neg down to negative 30, which is wonderful, but I really just want it for that dark foliage just to fill in this space. And then once I have the poppies, like the pink poppies, I think that'll be really pretty up against the foliage there. And that is why I am such a horrible garden planner, because usually I have to get into the project and see how it's looking and then kind of like tweak things at the time that I'm doing it. So I think that drives Aaron crazy a little bit, but I'm just such a visual person that I kind of have to be there doing it to know what I really want. Also, if you guys hear a bunch of noise in the background, it's because the guys are working on laying our brick pathway. You can see the bricks are actually starting to move them into place so they can start start making our path. I'm so excited. So 
So I decided to plant 11 of the poppies kind of in a block right around the Winecraft Black Smoke Bush. And then I'm gonna plant the other seven over here on the other side of the pathway because I think it'll look really pretty to have the same repeat color. The pink poppies there and then the pink right there. All right, I got them all planted and watered in. This is a tricolor beach right here, so it's got the really pretty bicolor pink leaves. With the pink poppies below, I think it's gonna be gorgeous. And then the other side has been watered in as well. So the next thing I'm gonna plant are the delphiniums, and those are going behind the gazebo. So here we are behind the gazebo, there's Russell. And I did just plant this spruce. I did not get it on camera because it was right after my vlog camera got ruined in the storm. Um, but I kinda wanted to show you this area and explain it to you. This is called an avatar blue spruce love the color this is like one of my favorite varieties of blue spruce it grows about 20 by 15 fairly slowly and it's hardy down to negative 40 to negative 50 so i think it will survive in zone five so gazebo's right here to my left and this whole area is going to go through a pretty good transformation there was a hawthorn tree right there that was starting to revert back to its parent plant and it had blight really bad um, so we decided to get rid of that as well as the little pond that was right here you guys might remember that but i was super freaked out to have a pond with a toddler and then i planted a couple of things over here i wanted to show you those things today this is a type of willow isn't that the coolest looking thing <laughs> i forgot to take the base off classy this is called a curly locks willow so you can see it's like kind of like a pussy willow it has the really pretty catkins um, it grows five by five as all zone three so basically i just need to kind of keep it trained into this kind of lollipop let me see if i can get it better there we go but it's kind of this wild thing and i love it it would weep, like it would weep quite far down, but I really want to kind of keep it up off the ground. So we have a lot of planting we get to do in this area this year, um, as well as this bed. So you guys know these oak trees. They are the worst. So there's a couple of them that have something viral going on and they look just like Halloween trees. They need to go. So there's that one and then that one is pretty twisted on the end and then this one's starting to get it. So there's only a couple that are still like fairly decent, but they hang on to these dried dead leaves from last year and they're supposed to push out when the new growth comes out in the spring, but not all of them do. And so they just make a mess all season long. We started to mulch and then we had a little tiny breeze and look at the top of all the mulch. How sad is that? Russell, what'd you find over there? I see a bunch of bees coming out. Did you upset a bee's nest right where I need to plant? Russell, what are you doing? And these trees just get loaded with junk inside and it's near impossible to get them completely cleared out. You know, Erin and I didn't plan on taking these trees out this year, um, but we've just been talking about it quite a bit and just decided that we don't wanna deal with this mess anymore, um, especially because some of them are sick and we'll eventually, like the good ones, will eventually probably get whatever the other ones have and they're just, they're just a horrific mess. Um, so I think we might have these removed in the fall and plant something new. That's why I've kind of planted a couple of bigger things like the spruce. Because that spruce will get, like it said on the tag, 15 feet wide, so seven and a half foot on center from both sides. So it'll be a nice structure piece back here. I did plant a big cis plum right here, which is a smaller plum tree, kind of more of a decorative one. But it'll have nice purple leaves while this has blue. Then I'll have my black knight delphiniums coming up and then behind that will be a black lace elderberry. I've got three po the poet's wife, David Austin roses, which are a really beautiful kind of a, a bright yellow. And we've got my beyond midnight caryopteris and then a bunch of perennials that were here when we moved in, which I might do a little shifting. I like them, um, but they've just kind of come up all patchy all over the place so i might dig them up and kind of move them into blocks that right there is a whole flat of delphiniums and that's one thing about having a bigger size garden that can be considered good and bad like you can't just pick up three or four or five of plants you have to pick up the whole flat because if i were to plant just three delphiniums in there they would get completely lost so i have to plant in big numbers in order for things to be really striking and to show up
so there they are all watered in and you guys from this angle it's going to be pretty too because i've got three distant drums roses a grass some caryopteris a blue chiffon rosa sharon it's just going to be a pretty mix but i did want to talk to you a little bit about first of all this brown tubing that you see everywhere so this is our drip tubing and this is how we irrigate our flower beds and they have holes every 18 inches that emit one gallon per um, one gallon of water per hour um, and I have them about well you can see how wide I have them and this whole bed like there's another one that runs right here and then you can see the next one and then there's one there they just run the whole distance of this bed uh, I do water them in with a hose just to get them all settled in and then usually I'll like maybe supplement water with a hose a little bit in the very beginning but the drip tubing having them this close together typically works really well and one other thing about delphiniums i hear this uh, comment quite often about them they grow so tall and their blooms are all at the top and the tops of them like from middle part up is beautiful but the under part like where the leaves and foliages sometimes they get really tattered and kind of worn looking so it's a really good idea to plant them at the back of a flower bed which i've done here so they're kind of tucked in in the back there's stuff planted in front of them on all sides so you'll be able to see the show of beautiful blooms up at the top but then there'll be something else that's really pretty kind of midway um, down below it so i'll have the those yellow roses kind of midway and then that beautiful purple of the delphinium so you just have to layer them properly Properly so you don't see the bottom of the plant. Okay, so now I'm gonna head up to Versailles and we're gonna plant the other flat of poppies. All right, all planted. And again, these are the royal wedding poppies. So they're white with the black on the bottom of the petals. So let me tell you what's in this area real quick. We've got a Bloodgood Japanese maple with really deep red leaves. There are three Gatsby Gal oak leaf hydrangeas some Kodiak orange gervellas right here. There's uh, three of them around this tree. A totem pole grass. This is a pink flowering dogwood. Um, there are three Queen of Sweden roses. These are a very large full pink rose right here, here, and here. And then we've got the spruce. There's some green wheel delphiniums and some storm cloud amsonia, three of those. I think this spring has been the most fun spring since we moved into this house because up to this year, it feels like we've been dealing with so many big structural plant things like projects, like ripping out privets and having to buy like allocate money to buy a bunch of boxwoods and a bunch of trees. While those are fun to buy and plant, they're not like really pretty flowery things and fluffy things that you can put in your flower beds and do cut flower arrangements and really enjoy the blooms and most of them are in four inch or one gallon size cans which are much easier to plant all right all we have left on this cart is the lemon balm and i honestly have no idea where that's going yet we're gonna roll the cart around and find a spot all right so we're at the front of the house now this is the front flower bed underneath the great big old lilac we've got but i think this will be the perfect spot right in here um, so we've got an Arctic Fire Dogwood right there, Sweet Woodruff uh, ground cover coming up, there um, is some Nepeta, Daylilies, and then some tulips coming up. Anyway, this area is kind of dappled light because we're right underneath a giant locust tree, and I think that'll be perfect for the lemon balm. It usually prefers a part sun to sun location, and I'm hoping because it's just part sun, the plant won't be quite as vigorous because it says it spreads out two feet. Um, but in my mom and dad's garden, I've seen it spread out a little bit further than that, but it is given a quite a bit more light. So I'm hoping by kind of like restricting the light levels just a little bit, it'll keep it in check. So I've only got nine of these to tuck in. Lemon balm is in. I just love the foliage on this plant. I love how shiny, like glossy it is, while it still has that really beautiful texture. Um, and it's just the smell. I mean, the fragrance is amazing. And I'm hoping Benjamin like remembers this type of plant like I do from my childhood. But you can see all the drip tubing in this area. It'll be well irrigated. And I did go ahead and bring a hose out here and I watered them all in to start with. So I have a couple more things I wanna get in the ground today. These are a trio of forsythia. I wanna pop in here because I think they'll look gorgeous in the spring. Well, they do look gorgeous in the spring even right now. But when they grow up a little bit and they are shining kind of through this fence and up over it, people will be able to see it from the entry of our property. These are called show-off forsythia, right there. And they grow about five to six feet. Let's see if it can focus, five to six feet tall and wide. They can do sun or part shade and they're a zone five through eight. So I'm cool with them being in here if they wanna just kinda 
go for it and grow to their full size, we are going to eventually either have to cut this one back really hard to rejuvenate prune it or remove it altogether because we're starting to lose branches. You can see these like ancient looking branches and they're kind of starting to rot off at the base like one by one. Um, and there's quite a bit of dead in them. There's only just a few little leaves on the end and then a whole bunch of dead branches. There are some things in this garden that I don't mind losing at all, like the big oak trees that are a total mess, um, but I would be sad to lose this. This is such a neat structure and it's just, I guess it was original to the house is what the last owner told me. Um, so if that's true, that's amazing. But I did figure that if I kind of started planting some bigger things around it, if we do lose it, it won't seem like such a huge hole when that happens. We planted like this big, right there, red point maple last spring. And then if I plant these for Scythias, I'll have some bulk back there in case that happens. Plus there's quite a bit of space between the lilac and the fence. And I kind of want to have some spring interest back there, like earlier spring interest, since it's in the front of our house. All right, there's the forsythias. Now we need to do some mulching in here. That always makes everything look so much better. But there's some other things in here too. I did plant a little uh, drift of delphinium. There's a Kinsley's ghost honeysuckle up here. Um, there's a couple of roses and a lot of hollyhocks and a lot of iris. So it's just gonna be kind of a really fun jumble of color and plants. Also, while I'm up here, I should show you, this is the Centara Double Blue Lilac that I planted in the spring last year when it was in bloom, and oh my word, was it gorgeous and so fragrant. Sorry about the noise, you guys. You can see the guys over there working on the brick path. They're using a level that makes a really high beep. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but anyway, this is just about ready to break open. I cannot wait to show you guys. All right, so there's one more thing I wanna to plant today. It's a pretty good sized tree, so I'm gonna to have to have Aaron's help to get this one in the ground. Aaron, are you in here? Yep. Can you come help me plant a tree? Sure. It's a big one. Yeah, let me grab some real quick. Okay, all right guys, so the next tree is in the formal garden all the way over in this corner by the barn. Um, so this is a great big tricolor beach. Check that out. So I showed you my little one up front by where I planted the pink poppies. But look at this. Oh, these grow really, really slow. So I have no fear of it really ever reaching this height in our climate. Uh, but they usually are a very nice, just accent ornamental tree for us. But I love their slender branches. I just love beech trees. So this one is going to be perfect because they tend to scorch in our afternoon sun. So it gets morning sun this way and then it'll get protected from the barn and some filtered shade, filtered sun through the elm tree there. So I think it'll be an ideal location for this tree. We currently have some manner of bloomering lilac I think right here that got completely smashed in our snowstorm two years ago and it's never really rebounded so we're gonna remove that and then pop this tree in its place so we just ran into a little bit of a snag I hit some pipe and I'm not sure if that belongs to an actual active system or not we haven't turned on the sprinklers back to this zone yet so Aaron's gonna turn it on quick <laughs> oh crap well guys, I think I'm gonna wrap up the video with that, with that big bummer of a tree placement. Aaron's laughing at me. <laughs> Dang. Well, anyway, I hope you found all the other plants interesting and kind of where they went in the landscape and the other couple that I um, showed you that I planted before. Um, I'm just excited to see everything come to life. I feel like it's, it's doing it. Like things are coming around, but we're not quite there yet. Things, it feels like just this week got really green. There's always that point in the spring where it feels like it's actually spring and not still winter. So anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.